So hopefully now you can all see the screen. Um, so yeah, I'm Vanessa and my technical role is operations manager. So I was just looking at where the rest of the buttons were. Um, operations manager, higher education. And I've been a higher ed rep in the academic governance networks um, for quite some time. And I initially took on the responsibility of investigating and implementing students as partners projects in the higher ed space um, as part of some of the institutional strategies. And then the reality really hit when Emma and I kept talking about it that student voice matters for all students, not just higher education. So you'll see the journey unfold as we go through um, this brief PowerPoint. Um, Emma will probably do another introduction of herself, but I think Emma's initial title or is Senior Advisor Learning and Teaching, is that correct? Yeah. Um, and Emma's also the Chair of the Learner Engagement Network among many other um, meetings that she convenes and it's really the location where the reporting on such things as students students as partners occurs so that's why Emma and I um, work very closely together on this. Um, so together we have committed to doing all we can to advance student voice at TAFE Queensland with a focus on promoting a culture of belonging, a culture of collaboration where as a community staff and students can co-design the student learning journey. Um, so this brief PowerPoint really is just showcasing what's happened before, where we're at now, and particularly and most excitedly where it's actually moving to this year and early next year. Um, student voice at TAFE Queensland really is um, trying to become business as usual. Before we continue, we'd also like to acknowledge the importance of the lands we're all zooming in from. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and future and make the commitment to improve our knowledge of the history of First Nations peoples, their culture and their connection to country. And just a bit of a brief background as to why we're doing what we're doing, given the landscape of TAFE Queensland. So there are 50 plus campuses spread across Queensland with approximately, and I think in a future um, slide it talks about, we've now cracked over 140,000 students um, each year. And that's ranging from certificate one to bachelor degrees and soon to also be adding some master um, qualifications on scope. And we also include apprenticeships and TAFE at schools within that group. And we are a registered training organisation and an institute of higher education, um, delivering vocational and higher education courses across the regions. We also offer um, higher education courses in partnership with universities, including University of Canberra and Southern Cross Uni, um, with more partnerships being explored. Um, so without stating the obvious, it clearly state, indicates that TAFE Queensland does have a complex business structure. Um, we report to the minister, um, it's governed by an independent TAFE Queensland board. Um, so just by our geographic reach, um, student voice does not and cannot look the same in every region, which builds complexities. So the student success and retention strategy contains a goal relating to student voice. Um, this strategy identified numerous initiatives, which included establishing students as partners projects and providing student, supporting student voice resources to staff and students. Um, so as I mentioned, student voice did start out as a higher education initiative, but we quickly realized that TAFE Queensland had an opportunity to be innovative in its approach and design to student engagement. Um, the core purpose of establishing a consistent approach to student voice was to create a supportive and inclusive community where students and staff can collaborate within and across regions. TAFE Queensland's membership of Student Voice Australasia inspired Emma and I to take on the challenge of developing an institution-wide, geographically dispersed, all-inclusive model of student voice. And we're exhausted. Um, the broader purpose of embedding a culture where student voice is encouraged, celebrated and supported remains the key initiative. I mean, it really is looking at the opportunities for students to engage, collaborate, represent and lead, hence the headings. Um, and that, that represents diversity and how that's done across the regions. It's not a one size fits all model. Um, and I think the core purpose of even presenting today and 
and meeting up with other TAFE institutes really is looking at having a centralised set of resources at our institution that has often been a culmination of what we've seen um, across many organisations, specifically TAFEs, which generally do have a different diverse cohort. So Student Voice at TAFE Queensland has been under development for at least 18 months. Sometimes it feels like double that. Um, student ambassadors, some of the achievements, student ambassadors are now part of business. That's uh, business as usual. They initially commenced student voice as a pilot um, and then more um, ambassador roles have been added, including in sport and First Nations. Um, merch has been purchased, which is pretty exciting to start seeing some of um, branded material and you'll start to see some of the logo in future slides. Um, so the idea is to develop regional student voice packs um, to go out to our six regions. Um, so there's student voice branded notebooks, ambassador, student ambassador and student voice badges, tote bags, postcards, student voice banners, which will also form part of the regional packs. Um, and they're going to be distributed at the launch, which we'll talk about later. And we do have an institutional executive sponsor of Student Voice, which has become really beneficial in encouraging engagement across the regions. Um, and a dedicated Student Voice email box is being created, which we'll talk about later. And there's an internal intranet page, which includes resources for staff. And then we have the external facing website providing opportunities for students to register their interest, which we'll also chat about later. Um, student Voice at TAFE Queensland values community and collaboration, um, fosters support and supports a culture of learning and belonging, creating safe and supportive learning pathways that celebrate multiple perspectives, contributes to individuals and community wellbeing and transforms lives, transforms lives is at the heart of what we're doing. TAFE Queensland focuses on six stages of the student's learning journey. And it is within this framework that we also embed elements of student voice. So over to Emma. Thank you, Vanessa. Always difficult when one person's sharing and you're trying to bring your notes across and they lose it because you've got three screens. Hi, everyone. I'm Emma Rice uh, from TAFE Queensland. And uh, we did say, we didn't mention at the very beginning, this is one of the activities from the Student Success and Retention Strategy Goal 5, is all around students as partners. Um, on the slide, we are particularly proud and excited by the website page for our current students and just for public knowledge, raising awareness of student voice at TAFE Queensland. We have information publicly available on our website that talks about becoming an active part of student voice. And we think this is an exciting opportunity for all students to be able to expand their professional networks, develop personal and professional skills and make a difference in their education community. The page advises students that they will be well suited to student voice if they like spreading the word about student engagement, participating in opportunities and providing feedback and working collaboratively with staff to inform decisions and enacting change. Uh, we outline the benefits that they will receive by participating in Student Voice at TAFE Queensland. We currently don't pay students to uh, engage in these um, in these activities and longer term we can't see that, that we will have the budget for that. But um, we talk about them having their voice heard and enacting real change, improving the student experience for their peers and future students, developing key personal, professional employability skills and making connections and building relationships with staff and students and their wider community. Next slide. Um, there are a number of different roles and responsibilities within Student Voice, and you can see them on the screen there, engaging and collaborating, representing um, ambassadors and leaders. And uh, thank you, Annabelle, for joining us today. Um, Annabelle's been a Student Voice lead of ambassadors for a long time at our Skills Tech Trade Training Centres. And um, you can see the different roles that people have. And just to let you know, we're progressing the leaders and student voice council roles and the alumni activity in at the end of later part of 2024. Uh, over around attraction and initial connection, uh, internationally and nationally, there are multiple definitions of student voice and then students as partners. And we spent a lot of time at the very beginning trying to work out which was the difference and is there a difference and should we be worried about that? Uh, and we landed on student voice at TAFE Queensland. 
and we uh, identified that it includes a wide range of roles, responsibilities and activities. The Student Voice Framework is available on the website and is accessible for the public. This is a starting point for promoting the culture of student voice at TAFE Queensland, because not only can we put all these, this in this architecture behind it, we need to change the culture at TAFE Queensland. And we really wanted the structure um, to structure the work that we're doing in, in evidence-based practice. And um, Vanessa, if you wanted to show, yep, you are. Do, can you show your other slide? The, yep, just makes it a bit easier. So we use the Sparks um, detail. Give me a Sorry, second. As <laughs> yeah. <across. laughs> and uh, the stuff in the colour is the actual, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking for their name. Uh, so you can see that Students screen. Partnership yeah. in Quality Scotland, an organisation called Sparks, and they put together this framework for um, professional standards framework in 2022 for how they will engage and hold space for and with students. And we worked with our communities of practice uh, to identify um, our own student voice framework at TAFE Queensland. So the stuff in colour there uh, is the actual framework from Sparks and the information underneath is what TAFE Queensland will do to achieve that um, that activity. So there's three across the top values, knowledge and activities. And then, um, sorry, there's it identifies five values, six knowledge sets and eight activities. And we've worked um, to identify what we will do. So we wanted to make them measurable, achievable, and that people could actually look at it and go, oh, that's what they're achieving. And we'll review this with the students at our Student Voice um, Forum a bit later this year. So that's on the website if you wanted to have a look and we'll just go back to the PowerPoint. Thank you, Vanessa, just mucking you around there. And the next slide is just about, we uh, worked with students in the student community of practice um, to identify our values and our values are there in the screen, community and collaboration, empowerment, inclusivity and diversity, accountability and responsibility and respect and empathy. And those things are reflected in the framework that I just showed you. On the next slide, attraction and initial connection. So we're just following the student learning journey. Uh, students express their interest via the student voice at TAFE Queensland website page. And there is a join student voice form. And the form identifies the region the student is studying in and what aspects of the student voice they are interested in uh, participating. Students are provided the, in the drop down box um, those different roles that I showed you before, engage a collaborator, representative, leader and alumni. And if they choose to be an ambassador, they get to identify which type of ambassador. So academic communication, uh, peer mentors, peer mentors, Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander, cultural mentors for international students, uh, which Annabelle and Ico have presented on to this group in the past. Digital champions, work health and safety and wellbeing. The completed form comes to Vanessa and myself. Uh, and then they get a generic welcome and thank you email. And then they're um, linked back in with the student voice staff lead, which Annabelle is an example of that for skills tech. Um, yeah, so it's working quite well. I think we've got about 84 students in uh, since January. Is that right, Vanessa, the number 84 uh, for different roles across the whole state. So you saw the, the map earlier. So we're pretty, um, it's working. <laughs> and if we go over to the next slide, transition to study and early engagement, you saw some of these pictures earlier. Uh, we know students who start well, finish well, and we wanted to make sure that people have positive first steps when commencing study, and we know that's critical to their outcomes. Ensuring students have early access to community where their voices are heard is paramount to the feeling, in, um, to the feeling of belonging and creating that community has been really important. Uh, the website contains, as I said, all those expressions of interest. It has testimonials from other staff. It's got details about our engagement with Student Voice Australasia. It uh, tells people about how they can access us if they would like further information. Um, we share this information through our student orientation and all through, through student newsletters. Uh, there's student flyers that we've created around campuses. Um, they're recognised through the badges that are there on the screen. And a student voice reps get a, a little goodies bag um, that includes notebooks and pens, etc. 
So we've got the different roles and engagers and collaborators take part in orientation days, are you okay days, other events on campus. Um, so they're people that the marketing team reach out to and um, engage in those activities. Um, we wanted to note that the biggest concept we have discovered with student voice is that all students need and want to be heard. And that's the greatest feedback we've received um, from our diverse student body and from our huge geographical footprint. All students are engaged as would be yours in surveys and they're invited to uh, focus groups, which we'll talk a little bit about later on. Um, and focus groups really contributed to meeting students on the ground and forging those relationships so that we can have those conversations and build those dynamic relationships and um, be able to engage with people better. Sorry, I can't see the screen. It's for, for, nope, there's no PowerPoint. Well, I think Vanessa's been dropping out, in and out from the session. Sorry, guys. Maybe I can share. You should have yelled out. If I go. You could get anything. Just hold with me. I think she's messaging me, telling me she's dropped out. There's, my phone's tinging. It's okay, we'll let her worry about that. Um, let's go through really quickly. Yep, so there's an expression of interest page. I don't know where, where I dropped out. That's the information that we can see that the students uh, get that information and engaging with them. And then also um, delivery and assessment. Recently, I've uh, Vanessa and I travelled out to Narundri, which is our Sherberg campus, and I went up to Townsville to meet with students, um, First Nations students, and we spoke about what they wanted to stop do us, us to stop doing, start doing, and keep doing. And we walked through the student journey with them about what helped them to come to TAFE Queensland, what helps them to stay at TAFE Queensland, what can we do to make uh, support them to be more successful uh, in their learning, how we can better engage with community and with, their, uh, with families and how we can continue to support them on their learning journey. Um, and then just recently, um, we've just releasing, like I think it's in the next two weeks, <laughs> Vanessa's messaging me and she's messaging me on Teams. Um, we're um, deploying a Yarning for Growth peer mentoring program. So we're really excited about this as another opportunity for student ambassadors who are First Nations students to work with First Nations students as they commence at TAFE Queensland. Um, and it will be a program across the state. And um, that with that, they get a Yarning for Growth peer mentoring unit. So they learn to become peer mentors, which is not only good for them whilst they're at TAFE Queensland, it's good for their community as well. So we're pretty excited about that. And I'm going to go on to do Vanessa's part. <laughs> um, so we know regular engagement is a must and support from ambassadors and representatives and leaders is vital. And we are seeking to establish a student council this year and to continue that Greenfields work that we've been working on for the last 18 months. We really want to move into that leaders and alumni space, which we don't have here at TAFE Queensland. Um, but for the rest of the groups, the representatives and the ambassadors and the engagers and the collaborators, it's our turn to hand on the baton to awesome people like Annabelle uh, and our other student voice leads from across the state because they're doing such a great job and they're doing this really well. And Vanessa at the beginning, she said, um, not, it's not a one size model and we can't, it can't be because we have got very, very small campuses with 20 people on it and we have got very, very large campuses with 20,000 students on it. So it is whatever it needs to be for the region, and, but the expectation is everyone will be engaged. We've just received over, oh, sorry, we just clicked over 143,500 students at TAFE Queensland. If each of those people have five people they influence, we want that to be really positive. Torben has been an amazing, I haven't got this live here today, uh, advocate of state student voice at TAFE Queensland. And he's been spoken about at this network before uh, by Annabelle and Ico. Uh, he's also on our website doing amazing things. We are also seeking to improve alumni engagement and Torben will be a part of that. He's coming back to speak at our Student Voice Forum and also a couple of other students who are keen to share their insights. Uh, sorry. 
you guys are just really big across the bottom of my screen. I just want to, there we go. Um, and hearing from what, their experience and how they can support students moving forward. And we think that's important to growth. Uh, this is around our, our staff resources. You can see on the right hand side, we've now got a new logo uh, and we're progressing. So everywhere you see TAFE Queensland, a student voice at TAFE Queensland, you'll see that logo. And SPOT is our single point of truth and it's the internal internet for staff. And that's where resources that are being developed are held for all staff to access. Uh, and it's where we keep all of that. It's our central repository and it's a combination of new resources and resources that different regions have been using for their own informal student voice activities. So we just wanted to harness what was happening around the state. There's been really great stuff that's been happening in this space and put it into one place. Uh, and this resource will continue to grow and we hope our continued engagement with Student Voice Australasia also will assist us with that. Okay, despite achieving some incredible milestones, I think we spoke at TAFE Directors Australia in 2022 and said we're starting out. So we've uh, really made some milestones, but it's nowhere finished. So in 2024 will be uh, our most exciting year yet and consolidates a lot of activity for us. On the 21st of August, we're going to uh, hold our first student voice forum, uh, but with students in the morning. It's a two and a half hour session. There uh, might be three hour session and we're having different uh, activities throughout that is going to be student led. Uh, for students about students. And then uh, at lunchtime, we're going to have the executive launch of Student Voice at TAFE Queensland. And this um, is the platform where we can uh, like raise it out through the rest of the state, but we have been doing this since January. So we just wanted to say, here it is, it's being launched um, and, and consolidate all that information. And I spoke before about uh, commencing that as student council and being a representative. And then I'm just trying to read Vanessa's notes. It will be a combined vet and higher ed student council, which is different to traditional university models. It will be obviously more fluid and the traditional count than the than the traditional council model, but we're keen to see what and how it will look. So we've got both vet and higher ed students. We'll have to work out what that looks like for us. And then given the structure of TAFE institutes, uh, it is a more complex model than the traditional university models. It requires time, perseverance and love for the concept and purpose. And all of this is relied upon volunteers to add it on top of their existing work. It requires flexibility and has ebbs and flows of successes and challenges. Vanessa and I have let, literally met every fortnight on a Monday every fortnight for over a year and a half, just plugging away at the next activity and chipping away. Uh, it does take a little while. You don't think that you're actually moving forward, but none of this existed in 2022. So we're pretty stoked with that. The biggest thing that can make a difference is sharing, uh, sharing of resources. And we've met some amazing people through Student Voice Australasia and just having chats with people. There's lots and lots of resources that are out there. Um, Lots of books have been written about this. You just have to search student voice, student as partners, engaging students, uh, all the different, you know, uh, different ways you can um, put that into search engines. Um, it's really great to see now that we have this TAFE Institute specific um, student voice Australasia conversation. Uh, where our models of funding and funding are different from universities, we're still working that all out. Um, the ability to customise an existing structure or document makes lighter work, but yields significant reward. And you saw that in the framework that we had at the very beginning. And yeah, so we've had a lot of learnings. We've had a, um, a few disappointments, but we're getting there. And I think that it's going to be quite successful at TAFE Queensland. Did you want to say anything, Annabelle? about your experience or anything that I've presented, please, on um, the spot. Firstly, I just want to say thanks to um, you and Vanessa for doing such an amazing job. It looks like you haven't stopped. Um, yeah, Thank and you. yeah, rightly so. You should be really proud of what you've achieved. So it's great to have your leadership and support. Um, Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's been... It's it's tough work at times for sure, um, but definitely like um, Emma was saying, the rewards are, are really there when you've got some amazing ambassadors who've really just been so committed and so generous with their time. 
Um, so we're very proud of um, Ico and I speak for Ico as well. We're really proud of who we've got, um, who we've had as ambassadors here at Skills Tech, and we're hoping to yeah have some more student reps on board soon. Um, yeah, and see how where it takes us. Um, but working with them is fantastic, so it, it's well worth um, being part of the project. Thank you. Hi, Ico. Ico's Ico is also a student voice lead. Uh, staff member lead. Hi, Aiko. Um, Hi, I don't you? know when you Sorry, joined. I was a little <laughs> <laughs> just a call that was a teacher. Yeah. That's cool. Did you want to say anything um, about student voice activities at TAFE Queensland before we hand over? Um, yeah, it's been really uh, rewarding, yeah, um, experience. Um, you know, Annabelle and me, we actually are student counsellors, so it's also really helped us to do other area of job as well. It's just really in line with what we do. And uh, luckily, uh, also teachers are really helpful to always recommend us that really you know, suitable candidate. And it, that's been really successful. We can choose the right candidate. They're really, really helpful to you know, uh, contribute push TAFE worker because we, you know, hold of TAFE Queens and this is basically trying to really meet up with the university. <laughs> so we try to make like a, that type of a structure in our, you know, <laughs> organization. And it, it's actually really, you know, contributing a bigger picture, which is really, really, really rewarding for us. Yeah. Thank you, Aiko. Are there any questions from the group? I just have a quick one, if that's okay. Um, I feel like our biggest challenge with our sort of student voice and getting it really started is marketing. Um, so I know that you said you like pop it in um, like your student news and all of that kind of thing. Is there any other tips and tricks you can recommend on really how to get the message out to students and have them sort of have some buy-in? Yeah, so the web page is really, website has really helped us having that web that page on the website has really helped us because people just cruise around there anyway. Having it in our student online orientation, um, you know, we've got um, a page on a slide on the PowerPoint, the student online orientation PowerPoint. It's also in our student online orientation. Uh, it's just really saturating them with it. It's in a flyer. We have a flyer made up with that. Um, and then we have the QR code. So if they want to find out more, they can go off on the QR code. Um, and then people seeing them around. So at those orientation events and are you okay days with the badges on and stuff. Uh, Skills Tech have done some pretty amazing things. Um, as example and yeah and then working with our marketing team to engage those students so it's really just about um, having it in the places where the students are the student newsletter the orientation the flyers etc having the people visible on the campus uh, having our staff aware that these students this is available so that they people who are really committed to it they're you know five degrees of influence they'll speak about it um, uh, and then loving on people. So when we have had complaints, it's just about we have a student voice at, at, um, uh, at TAFE Queensland process. Would you like to be involved? And just talking with people about it. So Annabelle or Aiko, did you have any other examples of that? Uh, how to um, promote? Yeah, how to promote. Uh, so for SkillStack, um, because they are, trade uh, students and they don't necessarily really come forward to start with. If you just simply regular put on uh, their information there, they may be even not read. You know? <laughs> yeah, so uh, my strategy is to have a good network with teachers so the teacher can also uh, advertise in the classroom and also if they know a good student, tell me the name. Any ideas with the teacher? I know, okay, I'm going to approach. So that's the good way. And if I approach, they almost say, sometimes they don't know. And say, so this is a great opportunity. They really like it. And then, because um, I, I, again, like I, I came in a bit later, so I'm not sure if Emma already mentioned this, but we provide also benefits because like they can access. 
uh, some like a um, uh, micro credential course, they will receive a formal letter from the CEO, which is um, added up for their career path, you know, employment purpose. And also, um, you know, they can basically sell, really promote themselves, sell name in uh, each event. So that's good for them as well. So that kind of thing, so we show the benefit. And um, yeah, it's basically like a, we mainly our trade tape dealing with men. So men only do what is beneficial for them. <laughs> Slightly different from female. <laughs> so we need to clearly show this is a you know, benefit that you can get if you do this. And then we use a lot of food. <laughs> To attract oh, lots of food. Yes. Let me do it again. <laughs> yeah. So we just basically yeah, they focus on the yeah, men's mental health. Like, we need to think about what the men think. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing um, that works really well is these guys, these student voice leads. We have staff leads in each region because we have got um, uh, six regions and fifty three campuses, and we really needed someone who was on campus to drive it, and you know. Uh, people who are passionate about it and committed to making sure, like um, Annabelle and Ico, I think we met in 2021, at the end of 2021, and, yeah, just been working on this and plodding along and, yeah, so I think it's been, they're really good ambassadors. Emma, do the staff lead? Sorry, my name's Bonnie and I'm from TAFE, Gippsland in Victoria. I just wondered if the staff leads did it in addition to their normal roles or if this was kind of above and beyond their their normal or if they were dedicated resources? No, we wish. We wish we had uh, separate people to do these activities. Vanessa and I are doing this on top of our usual roles. All yeah, okay. Lovely people do it on top of their usual roles. It's not as labour intensive as, well, I hope it's not Annabelle and Ico. We probably meet once every six weeks with okay. students. So we sure. have a student uh uh, student and staff meeting where we come mm -hmm. together and we talk about what's happening around the regions, um, what great exciting things so we can share those knowledge and skills and then if there's any challenges we'll talk about them and then sure. every eight weeks we'll come together with just staff and we talk about um, you know all those nuts and bolts around we haven't got our badges yet where are they <laughs> like you know all that stuff so yeah um, and then Ico and Annabelle, just for example, would run that in their region. Yep, we've sure. got an orientation day coming up. We need to engage the student uh, representatives in this or we need a focus group. Um, so, yeah, it's really then back to the, the how they run it in their regions. Yeah, sure. Can I sneak in one more question? Is that all right? I, yeah, I'm, really, I'm really interested in your framework and how you've kind of embedded it um, in your organisation. I think we're... Um, really new at this and we don't have, apart from kind of the general surveys and um, a couple of little kind of focus groups here and there, we don't we do not do this well and we're looking at developing it. And I, I think one of my kind of big worries around it is that students will have a say in a lot of different things and they'll want kind of um, improvements in in several different areas and how do you get the buy-in from the rest of the organisation to respectfully respond to that and make change yeah. in line with the student voice? I don't know if you've got any advice on that. All of our communications with students is some things we just have to do. So we can't change everything just because you feel like it needs to be changed. Like we have legislative requirements, funding requirements, it's just, it's, you know, ASQA requirements, et cetera. We have to do certain things. And so people are usually pretty good when we start out with that um, and how we get buy-in. So when I'm doing student focus groups um, or we're doing student focus groups, we get that feedback, but we don't give it to the teacher or the qualification or the cohort level. Uh, it goes up to the management. So because then people can't pull it apart and go, oh, well, this is not right or this is because of that. You know what I mean? It's people are, the information is objectively reviewed. And then uh, a commitment, I found that commitment just to get a hearing what people are saying and then going back and giving that information back to them about what and what you've done with it has been really vital. Um, and then there's things that we have made, being able to make really quick changes. And sometimes I think people wait in our case for other people to come onto their campus and make 
like tell them that they can do it. I'm like, well, that sounds like it's a campus responsibility. Go back to your campus manager. It's just about them having who they can go back to and have that conversation with. Um, and it's just about creating those spaces for those authentic community, those authentic com conversations to happen. And so they're more likely now to go back to their campus managers and have a chat with them. Yeah. I don't know that I answered your question. No, I think sometimes I you can't change do. everything, but you can just, yeah. yeah. And I think making yeah. it, like you and said, making it clear okay, right from the start, you know, about what's kind of in scope and not. Um, and then, yeah. yeah, getting it to the right level of organization to affect change. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, so one of the example I'll give you, I was in Townsville um, a couple of weeks ago in our Townsville campus, and they said what we really want is a space where we can come together that's culturally safe and that we, we know it's available and we would really love a cup of tea when we come in and we have a yarn to other, pe other Aboriginal people in this space and we know that we can come here when we need to talk with other people. And I said, that sounds like it's something totally durable in your campus. Have you spoken to anyone about it? And they're like, I was speaking to you about it. I'm like, but I'm from Brisbane. There's nothing I can do in your campus. They're creating a space. They've got the space there. It's just about people talking to people about it and wanting to put that in place. And also they're putting um, a yarning circle in. It's just about giving people the opportunity to have the conversations and then the people, the right people doing something about it. So, yeah. Katrina, that's how yes. I put my hand up. <laughs> I, I can't get my hand to work on the screen, so I'm <laughs> doing the old school way. Um, so I was just wondering how, like, how did you actually kickstart the whole kit and caboodle off to to get to where you're now, ready to <clears throat> um go with the student um committee. Um, so it's in our student success and retention strategy that we have students as partners um, in place, uh, a, a, not was an activity, in, initiative in place. Uh, with that, it had to have resources and with that, it had to have some funding um, and we had to have a reporting procedure. So that helped us having it wrapped up in some sort of strategy where we had to report back and people actually had to go, oh, gee, this is happening. Uh, we had really great commitment from our executive and from our CAO and from our CEO uh, and that it would be an expectation that regions would do this. It would be, and it's not opt in or opt out. It's like an expectation that we'll be doing it. How did we get started? We, um, Vanessa and I have really been driving this, um, just having those conversations, identifying what would be appropriate in the regions, identifying what was happening. I don't know what your geographical area looks like but um, acknowledging that this stuff has been happening really well in regions for a really long time and just harvesting all that information so um, what we stop doing start doing and keep doing is something that our southwest network's been doing for a really long time um, trade train centers uh, Annabelle and Ico have been doing a lot of work with um, and men around mental health and well-being for a really long time uh, so yeah just identifying those different things that have been going on and putting it in front of people getting the documentation together if that's what's required um, and when we first started we wanted to have a one size everybody does this everyone has three student voice reps on their campus every, you know and we just had to really slow our roll and say, that's not going to work for us here. There'll be an expectation that we have some sort of student voice representation. Uh, but what that looks like on Thursday Island is going to be very different to what it looks like at Brackenridge campus. Um, and just really getting people to think about that and, and that cultural shift that needs to happen as well, where students have power. Uh, and we want to work authentically engage with them. And um, what really put it into perspective for me is like, we've got 143,000 students and we've got 5,500 staff and who are we listening to? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so just, it's been it's just about having to have those conversations. And I keep on coming back to that five degrees of influence. And sometimes you do have to direct people to do it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not opt in and opt out. It's just what we're doing here. Yeah. So how? So so you're basically saying you had some existing activities in a few different campuses, and you use those to kind of build and yeah yeah establish. we harvested all that yeah yeah 
and the, it being in the strategy has been really important to us because it's something we have to report on and we have to show um, progress on. So that's been really important. And yeah, also um, leadership and executive support. Yeah. It's been really well, vital. Well, we're getting to that stage. We've got leadership and executive um, support and we're reporting to one of these um, board committees. So we're getting to that stage. We're just trying to build some momentum with the students yeah. Um, yeah. because we haven't we haven't done very much with them in the past. Um, yeah, and we're just at that stage now where we've put out a little survey to get feedback on what we think our student voice scope activities should look like. Mm -hmm. And I think. Um... Vanessa and I are in the unique position. Nobody really wants to do this job. So we <laughs> we build it and it will come. So <laughs> we put things together. We um, sense check it with um, student voice lead staff and then we sense check it with students or we engage the community student voice community of practice group and we talk about the values. The values was really great. You do this stuff every time, all the time with students. Like we've got some really great, um, you know, practices with engaging students in their learning so we just use that practice to engage them in this you know small group work to engage what 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 is the what does our values what would that look like uh what's this framework going to look like That's it won't happen good. overnight katrina but it does happen <laughs> <laughs> thank but you happy for you to reach out to us katrina yeah yeah hi karen hi um you mentioned that um, your staff that are at each campus that are looking after the student voice meet every, approximately every six weeks with the students. Mm -hmm. Do you ever oh, try? Yep. Sorry, oh, do you ever try to get like your reps from across Queensland all together, like in a meeting? Oh yeah, or is yeah. Is it no, just too all, hard? No, all across the state, we all yeah. they all meet all the student voice reps and student voice staff leads. We all meet once every six weeks, and then so the that's student everybody. Voice and leads. are they joining? They're joining online, obviously. And Zoom, yeah. We How do you get them links. to commit to that? <laughs> because I've well, I haven't had a lot of we success. don't get everybody. Yeah, I've I've um, we've sort of progressed and we are getting momentum, but. Getting people to those meetings is has been really, really difficult. Like yesterday we had our meeting and we had two people come in person and only one, no, nobody came online and, and three people were there in person um, from our main campus. And the previous meeting we had one person in person and one person yeah. online. And we're, we're just having, like, even though we're getting things done, which is great, we're having a hard time getting them to come together. Yeah, I just wonder if you swap everyone to being online for the moment and just see if you get more people that way. But um, we only offer okay. it online. Um, okay. I know that uh, Annabelle and Ico meet with their student voice reps in person. So the campus meets with the student in person, but yep. um, Vanessa and I only meet with them online. So um, okay. how do we get buy-in? I guess that we've just, there's an expectation that hopefully they show up, but we do have our meetings on different days and at different times. So yeah. because we got classes at all different times. We do try to have it in the lunch period in the student's lunch period and not make it so onerous. Yeah. Like we do it at lunchtime. Yeah. Okay. Something to think sorry. about. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, whatever works really. Perfect. Thank you. Over to you, Anna. Thank you so much. Um, Emma, I just wanted to highlight there are some questions Satoshi left in the chat. Uh, oh, sorry, I can't actually see my chat. I don't know what I've done. When I was trying to pull up uh, the PowerPoint, I've done something. What does it say? Sorry. Um, look, I, I've got a lot of them, so um, just please just take them on notice. And if, um, okay. Yeah, um, if you yeah. shoot me through your, your if you Great. I'll yeah. give I'll, you my I'll, email address. I'll put mine here as well. Thank you. Perfect. Great. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, everyone.